Now, in this video, what I want to do is combine aspects of 3, 4, and 5, which we'll just call, I'm going to call here nuances of adding up GDP. Basically, it's a way of kind of saying, like, how can we better understand the intricacies or the technicalities of adding up um, things to create a GDP number. And so let me start first with number three, which talked about the trade balance. In the trade balance, we are looking at net exports. And if you see in the last video, that's essentially exports minus imports. And what we see is that some countries in the world have a trade deficit, meaning that their imports exceed their exports, and that there are other countries in the world that have a trade surplus, meaning that their exports exceed their imports. Well, it has to be the case that in terms of the dollar value, if you add up the dollar value of the countries that have trade deficit, it has to be exactly offsetting those countries that have trade surplus. The two have to equal each other out. A country cannot perpetually run a trade surplus. That would be like China today. And a country cannot perpetually run a trade deficit. That would be like the U.S. today. That cannot always exist. Um, there's a lot of reasons why they can't always exist, but the basic idea is that you, if you are buying more things from the rest of the world than the rest of the world is buying from you, you have currency issues, and it causes changes in the value of your currency and your capital accounts, and basically, um, in the end, you can't keep doing that. Um, I don't want to get into why you can't keep doing that because we don't have enough time in this course to get to why you can't do that continually. But for right now, I'd just like you to understand this definition of the trade deficit and trade surplus. Now, in terms of um, double counting intermediate goods, double counting it happens when I buy a good that has lots of components in it. Like, for instance, if I buy a new car, right, it presumably comes with tires. It might come with a full tank of gas. It might come with uh, an air freshener. Right? I may get all of these things and more when I buy a new car. But we have to be really careful about what we count in the GDP because I don't want to count my $20,000 new car and then also count my $600 in tires that were in it, my $20 in gas that was in it, and my $1 air freshener. Because presumably this $621 is counted in this $20,000. So when I'm doing the mathematics of adding this up, I have to be careful to make sure that the things that are going on in the economy, that they're not being turned into a final good, which I'm also counting. So essentially, what we call these products are intermediate goods. As we go back to the go back to the original definition of what GDP was, it was the final goods that we were talking about. That would be like our new car here. There are different ways of adding things where you could just count intermediate goods. It's called the intermediate good approach. Uh, in this class, we're not going to use that. We're just going to count the new final goods. But I want you to be aware of that difference. <coughs> and then we need to talk about three other things that are going on in the economy. Used goods. Not counted. All right, so I have never owned a new car. 
Um, the car I drive right now is uh, 17 years old. Um, so that means it was counted in the year 2000's GDP. That was the year that the car was built, in 2000. That means that when I bought it last year in 2016, the money that I paid for that car was not part of GDP because presumably that car was built right, 16 years previous to that. And if I were to sell the car now, that would also not be counted in it. Now, when I bought the car, right, I did get a new tire for it, right, and I did buy an air freshener for it. Oh, cause man, that car stank, right? But I bought those things. Now, those things would be counted as part of GDP. Plus, I did pay to get the car registered, right? I did buy insurance for the car. I, I'm not saying that GDP wasn't helped by the other things that I did, but the purchase of the car itself was not going to be counted as part of the GDP. Also, not counted in the GDP are illegal goods. Uh, because presumably they're illegal. So why you can't really count illegal goods because it's not a legal, it's not a, um, it's not a, um, recognized part of the economy, right? So if I am, I create, I start a business that sells cigarettes only to 18 year olds. Well, in Hawaii, that's illegal to have someone under 18 buying cigarettes. So in that case, that's not going to be part of GDP. Now, we can critique that because, right, the idea is that someone who's got such a business is working and providing a service. It's just that that service um, is illegal. And then, as I alluded to earlier, we are not counting transfer payments. That would be basically transfer payments are when the government pays me money for meeting certain criteria, right? So our grandparents, many of them get Social Security. Um, they're, right, they're just old. That's why they get Social Security. Um, that's not part of GDP. Um, right, again, if I get money because I'm blind, you know, sucks to be blind, right? Uh, and I get money right, to help pay for some of my expenses, that's not going to be part of the GDP. Transfer payments, again, are different than the government saying, oh, you're blind? I'm going to buy you an eye patch, right? And I put, right, and so now the government, by buying me an eye patch that I put over my eye, the government is going to be buying that good or service. So that is an actual thing that's going to be in GDP. It's just that we're saying that because I get money because I'm blind, that's not going to be counted because that's just a transfer payment, a transfer of money from the government to me. And then I can spend the money on whatever I want to.